If you're on the hunt for easy mealtime ideas, our next guest has three recipes that are simple, tasty, and best part, require minimal cleanup. Well, sign me up. Culinary instructor and owner of Smart in the Kitchen, Marsha Smart, is back to help us save time and effort. Welcome back yes, to the show. Thanks for having me. So excited. And happy first week back to school, or oh, maybe yeah. back to school. Let's just yes. not say first week. TGIF. And this is where I think people really, they need simplicity in the kitchen. So this is really like a lifeline for this time of year when it's just crazy busy. Things that just get thrown on a sheet pan, thrown in the oven, and then the best part is you only have this to clean. Uh, at the well, end of the and also, if you put down like a parchment paper yes. or foil, then the cleanup of the pan is even easier yes. too. So that's, I wanted to show you guys this. This is just unbleached parchment paper, and you can do foil. I try not to do foil anymore because of the aluminum. Right. Um, so this is just a little bit safer bet, but okay. it makes the cleanup so much easier. Um, and it's really just throwing things. The only thing you have to do for this is cut the sausage right you can buy a bag of broccoli florets and then you have to cut the pepper so I did want to show you just a trick for cutting the pepper to make it a little bit easier okay if you stand up the pepper and tuck your fingers under it you can just cut down the sides okay oh, and we're cutting around the seeds yes and then the seeds stay in the middle and you might have a couple in there you can just like knock those out and then just cut them up and throw them on the sheet pan. So and you want them big and chunky. Yes, and everything literally, like, do not worry about it. You don't want things, like, layered up too much. You want a single layer, but it just gets roasted. And then, you know, kids can put this in buns if they want a right. sandwich. If you leave it as is and everything is Whole30 compliant that you're using, okay. this is a great, easy Whole30 dinner. You just eat it off a plate or out of a bowl. You've added yes. some sauerkraut here and some hot mustard. Yes, yeah, so grainy mustard. And I just end up having it like this with a green salad, mm -hmm. and it's such a satisfying, easy dinner. So I usually use Peterson's or Teton Waters Ranch, are great sausages that are Whole30 compliant. It's so good. It's so easy. Mm, that sauerkraut is delicious. It's great, yeah. too, that you can cook the sausage and the vegetables at the One same time. time. So easy. And this is great for batch cooking. So if you need it yes. for lunch tomorrow, the next day, it's perfect. Exactly. Okay, let's talk about this chicken because okay. this looks, this has fall written all over it. Yes. And you could really change up the vegetables with whatever you want. You could put mushrooms on the pan with the chicken. You could use, you know, sweet potatoes, whatever. But the reason this works so well is that the chicken, the backbone is cut out of the chicken so that it lays flat. And that's called called spatchcocking a chicken. Okay. And you can ask the butcher to do that for you. Hmm. So you take it home and it's ready to go, or you can just cut along the spine yourself with sharp kitchen shears. And, and this is because it cooks evenly or? It cooks evenly and faster. So this cooks in 30 minutes. Oh, wow. Hmm. You throw everything around it again, put it on the sheet pan. It just has some salt, pepper, and herbs. Those are shallots. I love using these rainbow carrots because they're, beautiful. they're they are. so colorful. Um, you just put them on. And then the juices from the chicken cook into the vegetables and the shallots, and it's so delicious. And I just throw the garlic cloves unpeeled onto the pan. And then if you're eating bread, if you're not doing Whole30 and you're eating bread, then you can like- <laughs> Just mash the take, garlic. Yes, onto your like crusty baguette. So oh. this is so simple. When it comes out, I like to put herbs on top just because it makes it so colorful. Look how beautiful it's it is. So and I know pretty. you said you could swap out the vegetables, Marsha. Are there any veggies we should avoid because they cook too quickly or Good become too question. soft? Good question. If you do potatoes, you just want to dice them pretty small, like in a half inch dice. So that they'll cook so that fast they cook enough. fast enough. Other than that, I mean, really anything, green beans, asparagus, whatever, would oh, be delicious. Beautiful. Pick okay. your favorite. Speaking oh, of green beans. I know. Here we go with the salmon. <laughs> okay. And you guys can taste any of these as we oh, go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so this actually is not salmon. It's Arctic char, which is a cold water fish. Oh. And I love salmon, but I think sometimes people get slightly tired of it or they don't love the flavor. Mm -hmm. um, you can find this at Whole Foods, Central Market, wherever. And again, we have the parchment paper down. And I just like to sprinkle green beans on the pan, put some colorful cherry tomatoes. And then I top each piece of fish with some um, capers and lemon juice. And again, it like just gets thrown 
in the oven, roasted, and it's ready to go. And this cooks really, really fast. I'm blown away that this looks exactly like salmon. You know, I've never even heard of Arctic char. Okay, yeah, you have, have to try it. Have and a so bite. The flavor <laughs> is very similar to salmon. It's or a no? little similar. It's I think a little bit milder depending on what type of salmon you buy. Okay. Um, and it's just a great alternative. You could do this with halibut also. Okay. Or sea bass or any fish that you prefer. Um, I like to, in recipes, I don't love to give people an exact fish to use all the time because I want them to find whatever is the freshest fish available to them okay. and use that instead of like hunting for... The one specific yes. thing. Yes. I would guess, I mean, if I didn't know any better, I would just assume this it's is salmon. salmon. Right. Let me ask you, Marsha, some people may be wondering, you're using the fresh chicken and the fresh fish here. Mm -hmm. Could you also make these one pan dinners using frozen fish or frozen chicken? 100%. So you can find great frozen fish that's been flash, flash, flash frozen. Say mm -hmm. that three times fast. Flash frozen. Um, on the boat. And it's a great option because... Okay. It's inexpensive. You can keep it in your freezer. The only tricky part for me, and I think other people, is remembering to put that in your refrigerator the night before you're going to so you use do have it. to thaw. You do have to thaw it, or else it will really take a little bit longer than the recipe And the says. vegetables may be overcooked. You could thaw it quickly in a bowl of cool water. kind of okay. cool water as you're getting some things out or making your salad dressing or, you know, telling okay. your kids to do their homework. <laughs> but <laughs> happens multiple yes. times. You can use frozen fish for sure. Okay. For sure. This is delicious. All mm. of them. And I think all of these are really great family, you know, family friendly. Yes. And also, if you're having a dinner party, how beautiful does this look with less effort? So it does. This chicken, I think, is a great thing to yeah. serve at a dinner party. And the fish, they're so simple, so easy pretty. prep, easy cleanup. Everyone's happy. And we're happy when you come. Thank, Thank you, Marcia. Guys. Marcia. And as always, if you would like to connect with Marsha or for the complete recipes featured today, just visit the food section of our website. All right. This is absolutely delicious.